Hi, welcome to Christina's Knitting Catch-Up episode 23. Today is Monday the 11th of January 2016 and uh, I already said Happy New Year last week but I'll say it again. I wonder how long we can keep saying it. Uh, I'm Christina and you can find me on Ravelry as Chrissa and you can find me on Instagram as Cutiful Christina. Um, and I post a lot of pictures of what I'm doing on Instagram so come and follow me there. So today I only have one finished project to show you, a couple of, well, one work in progress, uh, one thing coming up on my needles and some dyeing as well. So the thing that I finished is my first pair of socks for the year. And uh, these are just a plain vanilla sock and it's made out of yarn from... Tumuk Valley Yarns, which is a uh, an indie dyer who's based in Victoria, Australia, and uh, this was her sparkle sock base. I can't remember what the colorway was called, but it was actually in one cake, and the cake went yellow, pink, purple, or purple, pink, yellow, one of those ways. But I figured if I just knit from the center of the ball, I would end up with one yellow sock and one purple sock and no pink. So I wound it off into three separate balls. This is my leftovers. Um, I wound it off into three balls so that I could do whatever stripe pattern I wanted. So for this one, actually this was the first one I knit, I started with the purple and went to the pink. So the pink stripe is always in between the yellow and purple. And this one I did opposite, so I started with the yellow. So when I wear them, the pink stripes line up and uh, the purple and yellow are opposite, as you can see. So, whoops. So that worked out pretty well. You can see at the at the toes, I like like here. You can see that I've got a bit of uh, variation here in the color. That's because that's where the in the original ball she transitioned from the yellow to the pink here, or the purple to the pink. So clearly the pink was in the middle. Anyway, so they're done, and I really like them. These are probably the most comfortable socks I've made for myself and I've gone off the idea of anatomically correct socks. I know I was really big into it uh, a few months ago but I've gone off the idea because my anatomically correct socks, yeah they do fit but because they're uh, narrower at the toe they kind of pull forward a little bit so they they end up sort of fitting in a funny way. They're not terrible, but I don't think I'll make them anymore. And these are symmetrical. And they're 10 stitches cast on at the toe using um, Judy's Magic Cast On, which is a fantastic cast on for the toes of socks that is invisible. It's hard to see, but it's, actu it's actually pretty invisible and you can't see it on the inside either and then I just increased every other row on both sides in a wedge shape until I had 30 stitches on each needle this is magic loop so 60 stitches altogether and then I increased again down here to 32 or 64 stitches so that's what I did for these I actually had to um, Oh, there's a little bit of a hole. I I had to undo these down to the heel again on this pair because once I'd knit it, it was too loose. So I had to go back to behind the before the heel and um, make it a little bit shorter in the foot. But now it works really well. I super duper love these. I just think they're so cute and tricky and I'm so pleased that I, it worked out well. That's the only thing I finished. I'm not doing terribly well for the January Sockathon that um, the Knitting Expat 
and very little uh, running. You know, on, on the 1st of January, I sat down and I knit past the heel of this sock and then I didn't knit any more for ages and I got... Anyway, like it started off well and if I'd kept up that speed, I reckon I could have made a pair of socks every two days. No, three days, sorry. A pair of socks every three days because I seem to be able to do two thirds of a sock in a day. Yeah, that works out. So, but then I just didn't. So, whatever. It's fine. Um, but have you seen how many socks Mina has knit? It's just incredible. So, just crazy. Um, now, what is on my needles? I showed you this last week. It hasn't come along very much. It's my two at a time socks using scraps of Arnie and Carlos um, wool. So there's my two little balls. One is smaller than the other. I think I've got another little scrap somewhere and I'm using just white contrast. So I'm up to doing a stripe of white and then I'll go back to the, the blue. <clears throat> and then for the cuff, or when I run out, I'm going to use this. It's just super wash, it's not nylon. This is also from Tumuk Valley Yarns. It's just super wash sock yarn. Um, or four ply, not really sock yarn. And I'll use that for the cuff. So that's in progress. I find it a little bit of a drag to knit two knit to, to knit two socks at a time just because well it takes a really long time to get anywhere. Um, it takes twice as long. But I suppose when I'm done, I'll be really done. And I won't have any left to do. Um, yeah, I won't get second sock syndrome, but at the moment I'm getting both socks syndrome. So what I'm going to do next, I've got two needles free. I don't want to do two at a time socks, but I might knit two socks at the same time on different needles. If you get my drift. And these are going to be for my husband. This was also a um, gradient, one gradient ball of Tumuk Valley yarns. It started in the middle of this and I just wound it into two balls the other day because I thought if I knit him a pair of socks just pulled from the middle of the ball one will be a dark sock and one will be a lighter sock and I don't think he'd like that so I'm going to do stripes so I'll start with dark I'll pull from the middle of both balls I think so I'll go one two one two one two and that way I'll be able to knit both at the same time like I'll swap yarns so I'll knit one toe then attach this and then knit the other toe with this and then swap that's the plan. Um, so that might be fun. Yeah, so that's what's coming up on my needles. I'll just tell you what I'm wearing real quick. I'm wearing, oh gosh, now I can't remember, oops, sorry, now I can't remember what it's called. I'm just going to look in my Ravelry page. But this is a cardigan by Andy Satterland. I made a few of her designs and it's made out of Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury. Um, which is 100% wool and it's not superwash, but um, where is it? I'm looking on my Ravelry page right now. So I actually knit this at the same time as a friend knit this. Ah, oh, it's the Marion cardigan, yeah. When I bought this yarn, I, I bought it mail order, so I thought it wouldn't be quite this pink, but it, but it is this pink. And anyway, that's quite nice. So it's just a little cropped jumper. I wear this quite a lot with dresses and this little this little brooch this little sheep he's so cute I bought him from a yarn shop in America last year or uh, not last year uh, in 2014 November uh, when we went there for a percussion conference and uh, it was an, the most enormous yarn shop I've ever been in and the people were so lovely that was the day we were leaving um, yeah, what else can I tell you? Oh, I did some dyeing. I've got to tell you about this. 
Okay, I dyed two skeins of yarn this week. I wanted them to be the same. They did not end up the same. So you can see that the pink color is the same, but while this one is gray, the contrast color on this is more of a brownie lilac. It's almost, I guess it's, it's brown. It's like a rose brown. Anyway, what I wanted to do was make a self-striping sock yarn like I enjoy doing and I wanted to base the colour on galahs and galahs for those who aren't Australian are birds that live around here at the moment there's thousands of them around because they just all had their babies um, and they have a very bright pink front and their wings are light grey to dark grey and they have a white top of their head. Um, they're quite cute, just cockatoo looking animals. And so what I did here, I'll unskein it. This is dangerous. So what I did was I divided the yarn into, well I made a big skein like I always do, I made a big skein out the backyard and um, then I divided it into four sections. The pink is the shorter sections. And I dyed the pink first, and then I dip dyed the gray to make it into a gradient. So what I did was I made the pot with gray dye in it, and I started lowering in the yarn from one end. And the yarn, the, the yarn that goes in first uptakes the most dye, leaving less dye in the pot. So as you uh, drop the rest of the yarn in, it gets lighter colored. So that, that worked really well on this. So you can see, because it's skeined up, you can't really see the gradient here, but like you can see that this yarn is a lot darker than this yarn. And they're both gray. So what it should end up like when you knit it into socks, sorry, here's my little notebook. So pink here, and then we've got dark gray going to light gray. It says gray to white, but I know what I mean. Uh, light gray, dark gray to light gray, and then pink. And it should be symmetrical, so that should go light gray to dark gray, right? So we should have this symmetrical kind of gradient yarn. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. Beautiful. So then I tried to do it again. And what happened with this was I put too much black dye in the pot to do the gray. And so when I dip dyed the gray, it turned out way too dark. It wasn't quite black, but it, it was too dark. So what I did was I got some wool wash and before I set the dye in the microwave, I put it in the sink and I tried to wash some of that dye away. But what happened was instead of it washing out to a gray, it washed out to a brown. And I was really confused about that. But I guess that some of the dyes, some of the colors in the black are just a little bit more color fast than others because the black is made up of um, yellow, blue, and red. Don't ask me why, but it is. Um, like when you look at the bottle, that's what it says. So I guess that the red and yellow colors are more color fast than the blue. So the blue sort of washed out, leaving this brownie color. And I still think it's pretty. And I still think there will be a little bit of a gradient effect to the brown come gray, or gray come brown. So that's quite pretty as well. Even though it didn't turn out how I uh, expected it or intended it, I still think that's really nice. And that will have the same, the same pattern as this, except instead of being gray, it's like a lilac brown color, rose brown. So now here's the challenge. I get to do up a skein. Oh no. 
So my main problem with dying is not the dying, it's the it's the getting tangled before I actually die anything. So when I do this stuff, I always like tie little bits of yarn around the yarn, bits of yarn around the yarn to prevent them from getting tangled. And it works to an extent, but it still gets really tangled. Like they loop around each other, especially if I uh, soak it in vinegar first and then take it out and need to get it untangled before I dye it again. So I'm trying to figure out ways to do that. I'm going to do a bit more dyeing today or maybe tomorrow. It's very hot today so I don't really want to be going outside. Um, yeah, so let me know if you're, you would be interested in purchasing this yarn or uh, if you would like to win it in a giveaway or something because I'm dyeing all of this yarn and I can't use it all uh, and a lot of it is kind of experimental and uh, if you would like it let me know and we'll work something out so yeah I'd like to be a dyer I think it sounds like a lot of fun and I always really enjoy it I don't have a warping board, which is uh, like a, a peg board that you use to uh, wind the skeins, like wind the really big skeins when you die. So I'm so bad at this. If I were a dyer, I'd have to get better at this. Anyway, that's the dyeing I did this week. So I hope you enjoy that. And let me know if you'd be interested in buying it because this is something that I would really like to do. Like I would really like to do it. So, oh my gosh, this is the worst. I think I need a class. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the knit along that I'm planning for next month. Now this knit along will go from probably the 1st of February until about halfway through March and it's going to be a deep a deep stash along okay so that means you need to use some yarn in your stash that you have purchased let's say more than six months ago and for me that's not very deep stash this yarn I bought in America in 2014 and it is Barocco Folio uh, Superfine Alpaca and Rayon and I just got this one skein of it. It's very very soft. It feels delightful and this is what I'm going to be using for the stash along. So I thought I might make a hat out of this. We'll see how we go. I have I had planned to make the Cloudy Day Beret by Alana Dacos but I don't think berets suit me so I might just make a normal beanie type thing. This yarn is meant to be a DK weight but honestly it's more like sock yarn. It's really thin so I might knit it at a small gauge. So put it in your calendar 1st of February deep stash along. I'm going to start a thread in the group. I'll start two threads actually. One will be for finished objects only and one will be for chatter so in the chatter thread please come and join like as soon as possible and tell us what you're going to knit what you're going to use when you bought the yarn what's the story behind the yarn i bought this in chicago uh it was the windiest coldest day i've ever experienced in november of 2014 um yeah so please join in and tell us all about that now I have one acquisition to show you and this was my Christmas present from my good friend Violet who lives in Melbourne and she's a great spinner and knitter and I sent her sock yarn which I showed you last week the pictures of it knit up and she sent me hand spun and it is just glorious and soft and shiny and she hasn't yet told me what it's made of but it's just so soft. So I just wanted to show you that. See how shiny it is? It's like fluorescing. 
The camera doesn't love it because it's so shiny, but I thought I'd make myself a beanie with this, like a cabled hat, maybe with a pom-pom. I don't know exactly what the yardage is, but it's extremely even. And like her spinning has really improved. So thank you, Violet. This is so lovely and I really treasure it. Uh, yeah, so lovely. But I've also been doing a little bit of sewing. It's summer holidays, so that's what I've been doing. So the first thing I made, I'm actually wearing, is a pair of culottes. I'll just stand on my chair so you can see my culottes. So it looks like a skirt. It's shorts. It's the best. I got this fabric. Ugh. I got this fabric for Christmas, and um, I've had this pattern for a long time, and I've made a few versions. And these are definitely my favourites. Megan Nielsen Tanya Culottes and there's a side zip which is an invisible zip and it's just the best. I love these culottes so much. I made them a little bit bigger than um, my last pair because I've grown a bit. Not much but just a tiny bit. Enough to make the old ones uncomfortable. I've actually already chucked them out. Um, but I just love these. I think the fabric's great. Yeah, so I made that. And it was really easy because I already had the pattern cut out. I just added a little bit of seam allowance and the whole thing took me about four hours, which is pretty good for sewing, I think. And I've got a plan to make a coat. Sorry, it's all over here. So this is my pattern. Vogue's basic design. And this is a really easy coat pattern. And I'm going to make this green one here, so the short length with a hood. I'm not going to do those sorts of pockets, so I might do welt pockets. And uh, yeah, it's a really easy coat pattern. It's got, it hasn't got many pattern pieces at all. It's got um, front, side front, side back, back, sleeve, hood, skirt front, skirt back, and that's it. And the lining is the same. Very, very easy. So what I was thinking of doing was um, underlining it, which is fabric that sort of goes between the lining and the outer fabric, so you don't see it. And I thought I'd make the hood, this, the hood lining the same as the outer fabric so that it's not too bright. And the fabric I've got, sorry, it's in a little bag. This is my coating. This is just a wool, nice wool fabric, which I bought secondhand somewhere. Got lots of it. So that'll be nice. I'll have to um, sew around the edge of each piece so that they don't fray. And my lining, this is the one in a bag, is this amazing China silk. And it is 100% silk. I'm pretty sure I did a burn test on it. Look at that shine. So the story of this fabric is that it's actually an heirloom in a way. My great-grandfather that's my dad's dad's dad, yeah, went to China and Japan several times and he brought this back from one of his travels and gave it to my nana, my dad's mum. And I mean, Pop has been dead for longer than I've been alive. So this must be like 40 or 50 years old. But it just looks absolutely brand new the color is incredible. So, and the back of the fabric is like the opposite of the front. So you've got the black flowers on the right side and the blue flowers on the wrong side. So anyway, isn't that incredible? So it's like an heirloom. 
But it's been sitting in my fabric stash for like years now. Nana's been dead for quite a few years and I've had it since then and it's just been sitting there and I don't want to I want to treasure things like that. I'll treasure things that actually mean something. She probably didn't use it because she didn't like it. Anyway, that's what I've got going on. Today hopefully I'll cut out my fabric pieces and get that moving. Maybe I'll cast on these socks which will be nice. Uh, Charles will like that. I've got lots of socks to knit and I'm feeling a little bit down about it for some reason. Like, whoops, nothing can beat these. These are just the best socks and I feel like everything's downhill from here. So maybe if I knit something for my husband though it'll make me want to do well. <sighs> And oh, also I'm, I'm knitting that jumper for him that I showed you last week, but I haven't, haven't got very much further on that. So I haven't been knitting all that much and it's because of my health. Like I've had this stomach pain that's gotten particularly bad and uh, you know, I rang up the specialist today. I can't get in until February. So that's annoying. Um, I've got this feeling of impending doom, like I'm going to have some emergency soon. But I went to my physio last week um, and he said, oh, it might be referred pain from your back. So I've been given all of these back exercises to add to my stomach exercises and it's not helping and I'm still in a lot of pain. and. I think it could be adhesions from my surgery a year ago. Um, and there's not much you can really do about that except have painkillers or have surgery. And surgery is best avoided really uh, unless you really really need it. Like my mum had adhesions 10 years after her appendix came out and it was an emergency because it blocked off her intestine, right? So that that's something I'm afraid of because it happened to her um, and these things might be partly hereditary, at least how much scar tissue you develop, not where it grows maybe, but it's, it's just all very worrying and um, my physio said to me that maybe sitting and knitting is not good for my tummy and I should be getting up and walking around and moving and doing stuff because this pain really started to get bad when I started my school holidays last year and for work as you know I'm a music teacher I'm standing up all day I'm walking around up and down stairs playing things so it's a very active job and it is an interesting correlation that when I went on holidays my pain got really bad. I've been trying to be really active the past week even though it hurts it's been really hard um, like going for walks and stuff it's fine to start when I go for a walk but by the time I'm finished I'm really really sore in my tummy but I, I don't know it's not really getting any worse now and I'm not ill like I never feel nauseous or anything so um, I guess it's just pain and yeah anyway this is a knitting podcast not a Christina's stomach health update o'clock so sorry about that <clears throat> um, I don't think anything else much has happened in the past week um, Oh wait, yes it has. <laughs> I had uh, I went to a vibraphone workshop. Vibraphone is another percussion instrument and it's commonly used in jazz. Uh, so Milt Jackson, Dave Friedman, Dave Samuels, Gary Burton, the uh, Lionel Hampton, these are all vibraphone players. Uh, Lionel Hampton is the oldest and maybe the most famous but uh, Gary Burton's worth a look as well. Um, and the guy who came to do this workshop was called Tony Maselli 
and he's a great American vibes player. And I couldn't go to all of the workshops because I had some health things to deal with. Um, but I went to a bunch of it and learned a whole lot of stuff. And we had a concert on Wednesday night uh, where we, all of the students, there were only six of us, we got to play a solo as well. And it was really fun. It's sort of the first time I've done jazz vibes. It's really my husband's thing, um, but he couldn't come because he's about to submit his thesis, so he's busy. Um, so I did it by myself without him, which was kind of nice because then I could see if I could do it, and it turns out that I can do it. And, yeah, improvising is is hard and a bit scary, but but once you do it, it's a lot freeing a lot freeing, it's very freeing and uh, kind of easy in a way once you get over it. Um, yeah, I don't have any video or anything but I might pop in a photo of me and Tony Maselli and uh, I guess that'll do us for today. Yeah, so this coming week, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to my physio again on Thursday and I guess I'll tell him it's not working my back is clearly not the problem here. Um, I'm going to do a bunch more dyeing of yarn. See if I can get these sockies finished. I know I can finish socks in a week. Like, I know I can. It's just I get a bit bored of them sometimes. And this two at a time lark is just a little bit boring. I know I've got a a jumper that I started like a really long time ago that I haven't worked on in a really long time because I'm afraid of it. Um, but I really need to get onto that. And the reason I'm afraid of it is because it's a lace pattern and you have to divide for the v-neck and keep the lace the same on either side of the v-neck. And I'm just really scared of it. So I've been putting that off. Um, so maybe in the next week or so I'll get to do a little bit of that and get over my silly fear of it. I'm going to make a coat. I'm going to make some more sewing things. Uh, I've kind of got the sewing bug. I looked through my stash of fabric and decided I don't want to keep all of this junk. I just want to use it or get rid of it. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that, that'll do. That's enough chatter. Um, Thank you all very much for your comments and things in the Ravelry group on my dyeing and on my episode last week. It's always super fun to hear from people. Like, I super duper like it. Um, yeah, so that will do us for today. Keep in touch, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.